May I come in, sir? Yeah. Come. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, afternoon sir. Down. Thank you, sir. You can take off your mask now. Yes, sir. I'll drink it. So, Mr. Amit. Yes, sir. You have done your graduation in 2020 from IIT Kanpur. Yes, hmm? yes sir. So, uh, is this your first attempt for the services? Sir, this is my second attempt, sir. Your second? Last year, I had scored uh, secured rank 289, sir. 289? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, so, this is your first interview? This is my second interview, sir. Oh, sure. so, so, how much did you get in your interview? L sir, last time I got 187, sir. 187. But that's a good number, 187. Yes, sir. But uh, you didn't do well in the returns? Like, sir, I think to get into the list, you have to do well in all things, sir. So, just by few marks, I think. Uh, uh, you must have missed by a few marks. Yes, sir. Shall we? So, why, why is it that after a brilliant career in engineering from IIT Kanpur, you decide to join the civil services? So, I would like to address this question in two parts, sir. The first would be that uh, I wanted to be a civil servant from childhood, sir. Okay. It is only by accident I became an engineer, sir. Okay. Chal and the reason for joining the civil services is that, sir, I would get an opportunity to undertake large scale work for the benefit of the nation, sir. And the social prestige associated with the civil services is unmatched even today, sir. Oh, that's right. Okay. Aap uche? Narayan, Narayan Amit Mahajan. Malam Party, sir. Malam Party. Narayan Amit Malam Party. Mr. Narayan, uh, you have uh, given watching originals OTT platform. What do you mean by that? Sir, OTT is a mechanism where content is delivered to the user by the medium of internet, sir. And originals are a subset of that, sir, wherein the OTT platform itself, for example, like Netflix, produces the content, sir. As in the layman's language, please explain to me. I am not aware. How will you explain to me, just to understand? Sir, Netflix is an online website, sir, wherein various kind of shows come. And some of the shows are produced by Netflix itself. Okay. Very innovative, sir. Okay. Those are called originals, sir. Okay. So, uh, what is the full form of OTT? Sir, OTT full form is over the top platform, sir. Over the top platform. Have you seen this movie, Kashmir Files? Yes, sir, I have seen the movie, Kashmir Files. On OTT or in the movie hall, cinema hall? I have seen on OTT, sir. OTT? Yes, sir. Did you like it? Sir, I think it was a good movie, sir. In what respect? Sir, I think it highlighted one of the aspects in our history, sir, which is not very pleasant. And I think many people were not even uh, aware of this incident, sir. So I think it has helped raise the level of awareness amongst the people, sir. Was it exaggeration of facts or it's only simply a statement of facts? How did you find it? Sir, I think while uh, any event is depicted in the movie language, sir, the producer or the director has to take certain liberties, sir, to dramatize the events. So I think he has made use of those liberties, sir. And I think the factual analysis is uh, very much to the point, sir, because in the movie, many of the clippings of the newspapers and the contemporary scenario is highlighted, sir. Okay. Another, uh, here you have given this TA for US student. What do you mean by this TA for US student? Positions, distinction, leadership held in school, college. Sir, at IIT Kanpur, sir. Yes. Like many of the third year, fourth year students are allowed to become a teaching assistant for... Okay, this is a teaching assistant. Okay, teaching assistant. For US students. Uh, UG students. UG is... You say UG. Okay, you will tell like this. Okay. So, what did you do in that TA? Sir, from the chemical engineering department, I was the first TA to be chosen for a particular course, sir. And the work involves sir, setting up the question papers, checking the assignments. And also, whenever the professor was absent, sir, taking a lecture in his place, sir. What is the difference between this direct tax and indirect tax? Sir, direct tax is uh, which affects, which is impacted on the person directly, sir. While indirect tax is levied on a general commodity and it only in a secondary way it is affecting the people, sir. Recently, it has been published in the newspaper that uh, revenue collection, both direct tax and indirect tax, uh, the collection was bumper. Yes, sir. Are you aware how much collection was made? In the last financial year? Yes, sir. Sir, as per the budget estimates of the last budget, sir, we have exceeded that actual collection, sir. And uh, the total GST that has been collected is around 15 lakh crores, sir. And the direct taxes that have been collected are uh, around 18 lakh crores, sir. Very good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Narayan Garu, 
I belong to Eluru. Yes, sir. What is the name of the district where Eluru is located? So Eluru is located in West Godavari district, sir. But uh, since last week, I, there has been a reorganization of the district, sir. So I am not exactly sure where it is new, newly located, sir. Okay. What are the major products of Vijayawada districts which make it so rich and prosperous? What does it produce? Sorry, sir. I am not able to recall. But no. sweets are very famous of Vijayawada. Sweets? No, agriculture products. Sir, that uh, region which Vijayawada is located in is a very fertile land, sir. So, rice cultivation is taken up. Rice and there is one more. Rice to both Andhra and both Jagam. Yes, sir. Okay. I am not very sure, sir. Which are, the, which are the great personalities that Andhra has given birth during the last 50 to 80 years? So, I think the foremost would be Sri NTR, uh, Nandamuri Tarak Ramarao, who was also the Chief Minister, sir, of uh, Andhra Pradesh, sir. In addition, sir, uh, I think uh, even Sri y YSR Red, uh, Reddy, who was also the Chief Minister, I think these are the very famous okay. politicians. N.T. Rama Rao acted alone, acted in three roles in a film, Telugu film Mahabharat. One was Lord Krishna, another was Arjun. What was the third one? Sorry, sir, I have not watched any film. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, tell me, uh, they, they, you know, this colonialism keeps changing its face and uh, people are accusing China of developing colonies through some other means. What are those means? Not uh, army, not uh, military, no, but through other means. What are those means? So just a clarification, so colonial colonies. Colonies, in a way. Not exactly yes, sir. the meaning of colony that we are used to, like we were colonies from the British, but no idea. Uh, yes, sir. I am aware, sir, there are two primary strategies as China has followed, sir. One is the debt trap diplomacy, sir. I am talking of that. Yes. Just elaborate on that. So, sir. I think this has been a transition from the times of Deng Xiaoping, sir, where Chinese used to be at the uh, back burner. Debt trap. Yes, sir. And uh, under the current president Xi Jinping, the debt trap diplomacy has been heavily used, sir. Wherein uh, various projects under the Belt and Road Initiative and uh, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor are being uh, pushed forward, sir. Wherein loans are given to the various of the willing states. What is the size of total outstanding loan of China towards other uh, countries, approximately? So I think it is in excess of five hundred billion dollars, sir. 500 billion dollars million dollar uh, million or billion? billion sir billion okay what is india's gdp so india's gdp is currently uh, 2.5 billion dollars sir 2.5 billion billion, billion dollars <laughs> and outstanding loan is 5.8 trillion dollars yes sir. Today. yes sir thank you sir what are the highlights of this loan? It is related to BRI. One is this. What are the other highlights? Sir, many of these loans have a clauses that if the interest payments are not made, sir, then the uh, Chinese government or the loan giver can take over the physical assets, sir. Same asset which they have developed. Yes, sir. And uh, many of the conditions are uh, uh, very stringent, sir, the interest payment schedule, all that, sir. Apart from that, sir, the environmental regulatory uh, or labor stand uh, safeguards are not very strict, sir. What is the interest they normally charge? I mean, the range of the interest. Sorry, sir, I am not aware of that, sir. Three point five. Achha. Uh, where exactly this condition that there was a failure, default in interest payment, repayment, and then they took action? Can you give a few examples? So one example would be, sir, in Sri Lanka, sir, wherein they have taken over facilities, uh, facilities in the Hamantota port, sir. Correct. What else? So, I am not exactly sure, sir, but I think in West East Africa, there are also. Yes, Angola is second one. Third one, uh, there is another feature that they look for people who can't get loan from IMF or World Bank. True, very correct, yes, sir. And then they try to blackmail, and they also say that there is about 300 and uh, about 400 billion dollar loan which they have advanced to countries and which is not shown anywhere. 
and Indonesia is one of the beneficiary. You read about it. Definitely, sir. I will read more about it, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, Narayan. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Vijayawada is famous for what? I'm sorry, by that. Ma'am, Vizag is famous because of several reasons, ma'am. There is a very famous steel plant in Vizag. It is also home to the Eastern Naval Command of the Indian Army. And recently, the presidential fleet review was held there. The oldest shipyard, no? Yeah, yes, ma'am. And Vizag port is also a natural harbor. Okay, you've uh, taken the anthropology. Yes, ma'am. So, what was the dragon man? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, in 1930s, one of the uh, cranium of a homo... Uh, genus was found under in northeastern China called place called Harbin and the person who found it kept it a secret for 80 years because the place was under Japanese occupation and in recently ma'am in the last five years and in the he Hebe Geo University research was done and it has been proven to be a new species ma'am but uh, that uh, finding is a little controversial ma'am that some people believe that it is a Denisovan which is already extinct species or it is a new species there is a contention yet to consensus yet to emerge among that ma'am. Uh, tell me something about uh, India's uh, participation in the Tokyo Olympics last year. Ma'am, uh, in the Tokyo Olympics, uh, we have uh, received the highest medal tally we have uh, gotten in the past few Olympics. And uh, we have also received the first gold medal in athletics, ma'am. How many medals we got total? May I take a moment, ma'am? Yeah, sure. One gold, I think two silver were there. Yes. And I think five bronzes were there. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. So, what was our ranking? Overall, ma'am, I am approximately aware. I think it is around 25, ma'am, to 40. I think it 48, right? Yes, or thank you, ma'am. What were the distinctive features of the participation? The gold medal in the athletics, ma'am. And in, in boxing, uh, Lovelina Borgohen had got the bronze medal. And uh, in wrestling, also, we had gotten one silver medal by Ravi Dahia, and the other was gotten in bronze, ma'am. And there were several uh, firsts, no? A new chapter is opened. Yes, ma'am. In hockey, we have got the bronze yes. medal. And uh, we also entered new field, which we had not participated in. Yes, ma'am. Fencing is one example. Oh, that was a very significant uh, part of it. So, what were the lessons learned after this all, uh, Olympics? What lessons did we learn? I think the Olympics this time have especially served to lift the animal spirits of the nation in this uh, field of sports, ma'am. I think the entire uh, nation's attention was caught in the Olympics watching the final. And uh, I think it serves to prove that even we can be getting many gold medals in the sport. And especially the low-hanging fruits like wrestling, we can do very well in the near term, ma'am. And also the opportunity women are now taking, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The majority were gotten by women. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, tell me something about maritime security relation to the Indian Ocean and the SLOCs. Yes, ma'am. For India, what is the importance? Ma'am, since India is located at, at a strategically significant position in the Indian Ocean, the enti entire uh, security in the Indian Ocean, we are acting as a net security provider, ma'am. And protecting the sea lanes of communication, especially near the Malacca Strait, which is a strategic stroke point and the Strait of Hormuz becomes especially vital, ma'am. For this, we have launched the Sagar Initiative, security and growth for all in the region and also we engage actively in uh, HADR operations, humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. Okay. And what are the other two uh, SLOCs? You named one. Which are the other two? Uh, sorry ma'am, I am not aware. Malaga. Then, uh, Straits of Malaga. The other is? Uh, Strait of Hormuz ma'am. Yes. yes. And one more? Uh, Arab sorry. Ma'am, is it near uh, Madagascar? Babal, yes ma'am. Yes. Thank you ma'am. Okay. Now, tell me what are the challenges to the UN today? Ma'am, I think uh, multilateral reform at the United Nations is a, one of the biggest challenges, ma'am, because the UN currently reflects the power structure of the Second World War and many of the nations are not getting adequate, say, especially in the United Nations Security Council. And veto power. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. Veto power and many of the members do not have representation in the UNSC. So, I think this is a very ticking time bomb, ma'am. And also the bureaucracy there is considered unwieldy, you know. Very bureaucratic. Definitely, yes, ma'am. What are the challenges they have? The bureaucrats at UN, ma'am. The UN. Yes, ma'am. The pandemic. The pandemic is one, especially with regard to vaccine distribution, ma'am. I think the UN has not been able to address the deficit in Africa, ma'am. And it it has not been very successful in uh, ending wars, right? So getting the conflicts to end. Especially in Afghanistan and Ukraine, ma'am. Yes, the ongoing one. Okay, thank you.
your first name is narayan is that right so my uh, my preferred name is amit sir narayan was a god's name that was added to my name sir okay god's own man right and just a little more in terms of uh, I, i was interested in knowing a little more about your uh, training assistant for undergrad you were yourself an undergrad student right yes sir so one class lower will be teaching that's what for the third year will be teaching second year is that how it works so the fourth year students are eligible to apply sir okay. and they will they will be helping the courses for the second year students sir second year because uh, the chemical courses start from second year onwards sir oh, okay. the first for year of the specialization they will start using yes sir and first year is completely common irrespective of the branch sir and that up. yes uh, there was this was, which paper do you read did you say so uh, generally i read the indian express sir that seems to be the flavor of the season actually everybody seems to go is that been told as a uh, uh, by somebody that that is the best paper or that everybody who comes here uses the same paper? i so i think the opinions are very balanced i i, I find both the opinions are all there in plentiful number great now uh, there is a ex comptroller auditor general of india who is mired in some controversy about can you recall so mired in controversy about sir that's what i want you to Number. So I think it would be Shri Vinod Rai. No, no, no. Vinod Rai is above all that. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> it really happens to be on that. So far, huh? <laughs> so far he is above. Yeah. Yes. No. Sashikant Sharma. Any bell rings? No, sir. Augusta Westland. So it is a helicopter deal, sir. Yeah. During the UPA yeah. regime. Yes, sir. So read that. Huh? Yes, definitely. He, he was the defense uh, secretary, defense uh, acquisition, and certain decisions were taken. They said, "Yes, yeah, I will read about it, sir." Yeah. Must have heard of Armed Forces Special Powers Act. Yes, sir. What the latest? What were the issues that came up now some time back? You must have heard about. Sir, recently Being withdrawn and yes, sir. So, what do you think of that? sir recently in nagaland there was a special operation conducted by the army sir in which many innocent civilians were uh, by a, by mistake uh, eliminated sir so i think in that context sir, there have been calls among many of the northeastern states to reduce the extent of the afspa act and preferably eliminate its operation in the northeast sir where is it maximum removed now lately sir it has been re- uh, removed from punjab sir and uh, in uh, northeast sir Men, only few of the areas are having afspa sir which is the state which has had the maximum kind of lifting of this act from uh, sorry sir i'm not aware of that sir and there was also another issue on the border regarding the additional powers given to border security force so the uh, powers of the border security force in the border states was extended from the 10 kilometers from the border to 50 kilometers sir in the states of punjab and west bengal sir and uh, the many of the regional parties have, have alleged that it is a violation of the uh, federalism sir and it poses many challenges sir because the powers of the bsf have been to arrest people also in till the 50 kilometers from the international borders sir mm, government sir it is some spe- specific word it they use it is called operational jurisdiction thank you sir yes sir that's it that's it Mr Amit yes sir taking off from where my colleague had left why was it in the news recently the armed forces special powers act so i am aware that it, because of the incident in nagaland i am aware no, that is there but that's not because of the afspa it was a misunderstanding but the armed forces it was scaled down in three states in assam manipur and nagaland and the government said that we have done this because of a series of agreements which we have uh, entered into in the northeast and the situation has improved now in assam there were two major agreements one was the bodo accord the other was the agreement with the karbi onglongs what was it all about can you tell me very briefly sir i think in 2019 the bodo accord was signed sir and many of the uh, bodo insurgents they had given up their arms sir and those who are not accused of violent crimes they were provided amnesty sir what was the demand of the bodo what were both these people demanding karbi anglongs and the bodos 
sir, uh, one of the major demands was that, sir, the area under there, many of the people who are not, Bodo's who are not living in the currently denated area, sir, they also be included in the Bodo district, sir. And uh, financial autonomy for them be increased. So one of the major concerns of the Bodo's is that they do not get the resources that are promised to them, sir. Basically, they were demanding, because they, they were indulging in insurgency, na? armed insurgency. Yes, sir. It was not for this. It was because they wanted a separate state. And therefore, the importance of these agreements was that the various groups of the Bodo insurgents decided to eschew violence, give up the demand for statehood. Same was the case with the Karbi Aunglong. That is the reason why uh, these, uh, the, uh, the AFSPA has been scaled down in many of these areas, isn't it? Now, in Nagaland, insurgency has been on. Which is the main group which has been heading insurgency? So, that would be uh, NSCN uh, case at Kaplang. Kaplang and, is long dead. Yes. Sir. It is IM. Uh, IM is currently involved in negotiations yes. with the government. So, what, why, why is it? Uh, why, you see, they entered into a framework agreement in 2015. Why has it failed? Because the, recently, Isaac Biwa had yes, sir. a statement saying that we will never give up our identity and our demand for sovereignty, isn't it? So, I think the sticking points that were highlighted by Shri T. Uh, Ravi, who was the governor of uh, Nagaland, was that, sir, they want a separate uh, constitution and a separate flag, sir. I think these were the main... And Greater Nagalim, that's what they have said, yes. no? So, what is Greater Nagalim? Sir, Nagalim is a much wider area, sir, it includes a, uh, parts of uh, Myanmar also, sir. And also Myanmar, so the government can't do anything about it. Greater Nagalim within the country, what do they want? So, there are many Naga tribes in Arunachal Pradesh as well as Manipur, sir. So, that would constitute Nagalim, sir. And Assam? Yeah, definitely, yes, Assam also, sir. Basically, Naga inhabited areas contiguous to Nagaland, which is Manipur, Assam, and Arunachal Pradesh. These are the three areas which uh, they will be wanting, right? Now, uh, what is this Act East policy which the government has announced? So, the Act East policy is an extension of the Look East policy that was started by our Prime Minister Shri Narasimha Rao, sir. And it, it builds up on the Act East policy, sir. Apart from the economic dimension, we are looking on the security aspects also, sir. How to ensure security and combat terrorism. So, that is one increment on the Act East mm -hmm. policy, sir. And uh, we are trying to... And sir, trade, economic trade, yes, sir. connectivity? Oh. Yes, sir, definitely, sir. So, have we been able to make any headways uh, so far as connectivity is concerned? There is something called the Kaladan Multimodal Project. What is that? So, my knowledge in this area is limited, sir. But uh, there is a port in Myanmar, sir. And through that, uh, we are trying to enter the uh, Northeast, connect, connectivity with the Northeast in a better manner, sir. You have a general idea. Yes. Basically, it is a, it is Sitwe port. So, from Calcutta to Sitwe port in Myanmar, then by the Kaladan River yes, sir. to a place called Paletwa. And then it connects by road to Mizora. Yes, sir. That is the connectivity, which is almost, I think the road portion is still uh, left to be constructed, but it is, uh, it has been uh, there for quite some time. Now, uh, let me ask you one thing on, on, uh, on China. You know, in, uh, there was an agreement which was signed in 1914 called the Shimla Agreement. What was that about? 1914, sir. Which has relevance today also. Sir, may I take a guess, sir? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, I think it is in relation to the border dispute, sir. And I think maybe it may be the McMahon agreement. Sir. Absolutely. McMahon uh, line was enunciated in this particular thing. But yes. did China accept it or not? So, China currently does not accept No, not currently. Then? So, then there were representatives from Tibet, sir, who had come. Uh, and they, they had, uh, I think, agreed. It was between India, British Empire and Tibet, sir. British Empire, Tibet and China. Yes, thank you, sir. China refused to sign the agreement saying that Tibet... We can't have uh, we, two sovereign nations, Tibet is part of the China, so therefore, we will not accept this, right? Okay. So, we end your mock interview. Yes, sir. And we'll give you feedback. Sure. You've already faced one UPSC interview? Yes, sir. Right. So, basically, what happens is that primarily the questions will come either from your DAF or from current affairs. Now, so far as your DAF is concerned, you have uh, anthropology as your optional subject. Your home state is Telangana. You, uh, your place of birth is Andhra. So, you know, you must be able to answer questions relating to both Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, things which are happening. Like even 
since yesterday the telangana chief minister has been demanding yes, uh, on the rice uh, parboiled rice issue yes, and things are happening you know the, your interview is still 15th may you have a lot of time but you know things keep on happening so just keep an eye on that then of course chemical engineering was your subject uh, so graduation so once again little bit how what is the significance of chemical engineering definitely yes. how is it applied to your daily uh, for the progress of the country supposing well, they can ask you that you have given cricket as your uh, your hobby yes, so be prepared to answer questions on uh, basically which are the international events taking place the ipl events which are taking place in india uh, vinod rai has come out with a new book yes sir on uh, night watchman uh, night watchman yes sir uh, his years in the bcci yes sir so you know the, basically then earlier there was this loda committee report on bcci reforms so anything connected with cricket you know there so many things so just brush up on that and of course you you were already asked questions on your teaching assistantship for the, the ugs and for watching uh, original ott platform so things like that you can you should be able to answer, respond to you were an intern for one year in this uh, company uh, so it was two two months sir two oh, only two months is it yes sir 2000 okay okay so you know what was it all about what did you gain from this then the other main area which is a huge area is your current affairs so on that you will have to work harder you you have a good knowledge but the more you able to add to that knowledge so far as current affairs is concerned the better you will do in the interview because you know after all it's a very tough competition so full knowledge on different parts of the country is very essential yes jammu and kashmir post 2019 when 370 and 35a were withdrawn what were the reasons for that what was 35a all about what did it what rights did it give to these west pakistan refugees what uh, the what was the roshni act which was discussed which, you know, which came into limelight which has been scrapped by the government since yes. then cases have been registered against people who were involved in that rehabilitation of the kashmiri pandits yes, government has announced a series of steps so yes, these are things which you must be able to respond to yes, similarly the northeast you you see you have a you have a little bit of knowledge but you know like afspa you went straight to punjab punjab to kab se it's been there, yes, not there and afspa has been in the news throughout in the northeast because in manipur there were allegations of uh, human rights violations the matter is still pending in the supreme court yes, sir. and there was this lady called iram sharmila yes, who uh, was on a fast for donkey's years so you know these are the things which you must be able to respond to yes, very sir. very clearly and then international affairs you know things are happening what is happening in pakistan what is happening in sri lanka china continues to remain a major cause of concern for everyone the uh, war in uh, in europe that is a important thing political developments elections are taking place in france yes so yes. you know what i'm saying is that you have to uh, there is no uh, uh, we can't say ke whether somebody this will come or that will come yes. so the f- wider you spread your net the yes. better you will so be i able think a lot of news is being generated this month sir <laughs> <laughs> lot of news yes, and every day it is being generated yes, yes. so <laughs> point is that you have a lot of time so you must have a system by which what has come in the news today how will you retain it yes ne- for the next 20 days see either you uh, do it electronically or you take out cuttings from the newspaper whatever that is the that is your choice but you must spend a lot of time in building up your knowledge on these things. yes okay otherwise see you have your plus points are there you are a, you have a good personality you are able to speak very effectively all that is there but you know the point is that uh, to speak effectively you must have some information also yes sir otherwise you are doing very well yes yeah. you are doing quite well i think you should do well but the more knowledge you are able to acquire i think that's a yes sir. anything which you would like to ask uh, no sir <laughs> chal okay thank you very much right. all the best don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update